pajama suicide. <laughs> But dash it all, Susan, it's a crime. Suicide's a crime. Where are the police? Where's Sherlock Holmes? That's what I've been thinking, Robert. Where is Sherlock Holmes? Watson, play him, Holmes. Play him. It's a beauty. Don't let him get away. Blast. I've lost him. I'm sorry you lost him, old man. What are you doing, old fellow? Changing the flyer? Don't be mendacious, Watson. Being yes, when a man slips away four times in an hour to change his fly and still has the same fly in his book, I call that being mendacious. It is. In fact, I, I felt a bit faint. Touch of the sun. Oh, touch a humbug. Humbug? Yes, your hat's on backwards. Mm -hmm. Ah, just as I thought. You've been reading about those filthy pajama murders again. And you gave me a solemn word of honor. Did you, did you say murders? I did. People said suicide. Nonsense, Watson. Suicides invariably leave notes behind them. Not one of these men left so much as a word. Hang it all, a fellow hasn't got time to dash off a note before throwing himself in front of a bus. But these people didn't throw themselves under buses. Each and every one of them went quietly to bed and behind locked doors. And each and every one of them rose up suddenly in the night and killed himself. I never thought of that. Obviously. Neither did Scotland Yard. You know, Watson, there's something uncanny about it. Something monstrous and horrible. Something that drives these poor fellows to their so-called suicide. And when you drive a man to suicide, that's murder. You amaze me, Holmes. I say, haven't we better get back to London at once with all this murder afoot? I'm sorry, Watson. The pleasures of the chase are no longer for me. I'm through with crime. <sighs> now I'm forever. You, you, you don't mean that? Yes, unfortunately. But why? Watson, I have a confession to make to you. I'm no longer equal to it. Lately, I've been subject to the most alarming dizzy spells. Not a swimming sensation. Difficulty in maintaining your balance when you stand upright. Precisely. And you know what that leads to. Cerebral hemorrhage, if you don't look out. Exactly. Then we must get back to London as quickly as we can. I'll take you to see Armitage. Not until we've had our fun, old boy. If this is to be our last holiday together, I'd like to get my fill of it. Oh, sir, old fellow, I'm afraid I upset you with a piece of newspaper. Oh, think nothing of it. At least you know now why I left London in the midst of the most shocking crime wave since Jack the Ripper. Watson! <laughs> Carter must be added to the list of suicides that have shocked London in recent months. It is indeed regrettable that Mr. Sherlock Holmes... You know, Susan, that fellow Holmes had no business dying just now. It's an outrage, a dashed outrage. Poor man. I hear they're going to send all his things to the British Museum. Things? What do you mean things? You mean his old boots and discarded waistcoats? No, Robert, what would the British Museum do with his waistcoats? It's his scrapbooks they're going to exhibit and all his records. The strange death of ex-President Murillo. The giant rat of Sumatra. The ghastly affair. You know, in some ways, Mrs. Hudson, this is the happiest day of my life. No, no, Dr. Watson. Don't get down in the dumps. What can't be cured must be endured, you know. You're all right, my dear, you're right. Sentiment, pure sentiment. Sit down there now. Oh dear, 
That must be the van from the museum. And his things aren't even half packed. You go down, my dear, and hold them off for 15 minutes. And they can come up and, and take it all away. But I don't want them to take it all away. It's like tearing a piece out of my heart. Oh, there, there, my dear. I, I know, I know. <laughs> What's she sniffling about? Oh, you know how women are. <laughs> no control. Mm. I didn't expect to see you here, Lester. British Museum, you know, had to have protection. They ring up Scotland Yard. I just happened to be there. Hmm? All right, well, I didn't want to bring Tom, Dick, and Harry handling these things. No, no, of course not. Of course not. Ratty old chair, ain't it? Repulsive. What, sir? There's nothing ratty about it. Hope you're right, Doctor. Many's the time I've seen him sprawled out in it. Uh, oh. Funny duck he was. The same to my old woman only this morning. If it hadn't been for him, I'd still be a sergeant. Pity you didn't mention it when he was alive. Perhaps we understood each other better than you think, Doctor. All his old pipes. Why'd you let him fall in that blasted river? Why didn't you jump in after him, you big blunderhead? Blunderhead? That's very offensive, Mr. Starr. Me jump in. I wasn't there. When I got there, he wasn't there. He'd gone. He'd gone. Oh, sorry, Doctor. Take no notice. I'm, uh... Sorry, sorry. Did you like to have one of his pipes? I wouldn't mind. Oh, I hope so. Thank you, Doctor. You've picked a very old one. That's the one I want. It's the one I remember best. I'll be stepping downstairs to the vans for a bit, Doctor. Take your time with the packing, Doctor. There's no hurry, you know. British Museum will still be there. What's the row about? I registered package for Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Oh, hmm. Well, he'll sign for it. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I'll bring it here. Fine sign here, sir. Pencils these days. Not worth the paper they write on. That's right. You got a knife? No, I ain't. Well, uh, wait a minute. All right. Cool dummy. So this is where a young ad. These were his rooms. Not much of a room if you ask me. Well, who's asking you? Yeah, that's mine. I lost things like that before. Oh, well. I suppose it suited him all right. All right, all right, all right. He was no great shakes as a tick from all I heard. Just one of them easy chair Johnnies. Would sat on his tail and let everybody else do the dirty work. Uh, that'll be enough. Mind you, I ain't saying he didn't get that credit. But newspapers can be bought. Can't they now? You insert. You dare to imply... All right, all right, all right, Governor. Keep your shirt on. I've got a right to my opinion. And it's my opinion that Mr. Sherlock Holmes was nothing more but an old herring gut. You, you say that again. An herring gut. An old herring gut. Oh. Up to get you, worm. We'll see who's a herring gut. <laughs> it's all right, Watson. I take it back. Call off your dogs. Holmes! Holmes! It's all right, old boy. Don't look like that. Get hold of yourself. Yeah. Have a drink. My word, you made a shambles of this room. How could you play such a trick on me? You brought it on yourself, old man. Throwing open my records to the public. Tipping off every criminal in the country. For sheer addle-headedness, you've surpassed yourself. Don't you realize the dynamite that's in those records? I had to stop you. Even if I had to come back from the dead to do it. I'll never forgive you for this, Holmes. Not until my dying day. It was a filthy trick, I grant you. But I had to see you. No one ever looks twice at a postman, you know. If the books are ready, Doctor... You can put them under lock and key at the yard, Inspector. What? I'm seeing things. Hi, oh, Lestrade. Well, strike me up a gum tree. Just when we thought we had you nicely dead and buried. What a sell. My return from the dead was absolutely necessary, Inspector. Necessary me our diner's bustle. You give yourself a treat acting about all over the place. What's the game, anyway? Very briefly this. It's obvious that these so-called pajama suicides are really murders. Brilliantly conceived and executed, they're very near to being perfect crimes. Where's my calabash? 
Oh, well, never mind. Indubitably, these murders are the work of a well-organized gang. And directing them is one of the most fiendishly clever minds in all Europe today. Any notion who? I suspect a woman. You need to back around this place, Watson. There's a fact, you. A woman? You amaze me, Holmes. Why a woman? Because the method, whatever it is, is peculiarly subtle and cruel. Feline, not canine. Oh, peacock. Canine, feline, quinine. When a bloke does himself in, that's suicide. Unless the bloke is driven to suicide, and in that case, it's murder. Driven? That sounds like a woman, doesn't it? Definitely. A female Moriarty. Clever, ruthless, and above all, cautious. Therefore, my first step was to give her enough rope by passing out of the picture. I see. When the cat's away, the mice begin to play. <laughs> Precisely. Bosh, you and your theories. Oh, Anyone would think you had eyes in the back of your head. You can keep the pipe, Lestrade. Sorry, old man. I'll give it to him. Very right and proper, Watson. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. Now, what features have these pajama suicides in common? Poor fellows just die in the middle of the night. Nobody near them. Behind locked doors. And they're all well-to-do, more or less. Right. And each and every one of them, it seems, was fond of the pleasures of the gaming table. Keep that in mind. It's highly significant. It gives us our one and only lead. Lead to what? My dear Lestrade, if we're to set a trap for this femme fatale... Well? I see no reason why we shouldn't bait it with the kind of food she likes. Got a pencil, Watson? No, no, I'll give it back to the post. Oh. Yeah, take this one. Don't break the point this time. Now, write what I dictate. And you, Lestrade, I trust you to see that it gets into the newspapers. Murders. Ready, Watson? Uh, go ahead. The distinguished native officer, Rajni Singh, Colonel of the Maharaja of Umpur's own Lancers, has just arrived in London. Rajni Singh? I never heard of the gent. He was just born, Watson. Oh, I see. Huh? Carry on, old boy. In spite of his well-known devotion to the goddess of chance... In spite of his well-known devotion to the goddess of chance, Rajni Singh insists that his visit to our shores is solely in the hope that British surgeons may restore his left arm, paralyzed in the service of the Empire. Sounds rather a nice person to know, doesn't he? Oh, exciting. I have to get a new line of small talk. What do they do in India, Norman? Oh, ride elephants. Oh, how cumbersome. You must see that he gets a card to the urban casino. Number 20, black, even, pass. Make your bets, ladies and gentlemen, make your bets. Make your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Goodman? May I? By all means, madam. You changed my luck, I hope. Make your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Make your bets. Number seven. Red, odd, miss. Oh, how ghastly. The fortune of war, madam. So sorry I didn't bring you luck. But you have brought me the charm of your presence, madam. Excuse me. Make your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Make your bets. Blank check, please. Name, please. Russian Singh. One hundred pounds. Make your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Excuse me. Make your bets. How's your luck, my sweet? I think it will cut up rather large. Make your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Norman. You have this gentleman's place. So sorry. Thank you. Sixteen. Oh, not sixteen again. You play. Nineteen. I feel lucky. I almost wish that you... Would play nineteen. Wish me luck. It's kind of you to be concerned for a stranger. But no one from your country is like a stranger to me. Make your bets. You see, my father was Captain Spedding of the Bengal Lancers. I was born at Srinagar. In the Kashmir. Because there the most beautiful women in the world are born. That's all now. No more. Number 16. Oh. Red, even, miss. If only I'd let you alone. It is fate, madame. One cannot fight it. Would you wish to take my place, sir? Thank you. Good night, madame. And goodbye. 
Make your best, ladies and gentlemen. Make your best. Don't. Ah, oh, you mustn't. A struggle would be unseemly, madame. Another time, if you'll excuse me. No, please. Things will look very different in the morning, I assure you. That is easy to say. Ah, oh, but I know. I've been in the same situation myself. You? Some time ago, I lost all my money. Nasty jolt, isn't it? The money, madame, it is nothing. But honor, that is everything. Honor? It is not easy to confess. I am, as you may not know, a soldier of some distinction. Could you believe that just now I draw a check? It is worthless. Oh, I'm so sorry. Haven't you any funds at all? Nothing. Not even enough to pay my bill at the hotel. No friends? Not here in London. Well, haven't you anything you can raise money on? Jewels or... You think of native princes, madame. Such is not my good fortune. Perhaps an insurance policy. No, nothing. Only a little uh, 5,000 pounds. I, I cannot borrow on it. It has not been long enough in force. Oh, nonsense. It's perfectly simple if you know the right people. I can send you to someone if you wish. Is it possible? Of course, you have to pay interest. A mere 5%. All you do is make your policy over to the man who accommodates you. Make him your beneficiary. In the event of my death? Yes. But you're not going to die, are you? It would be an impertinence, madame, to take my life out of your hands. How strange that a man's life should lie in such a little hand, so soft. I may come tomorrow and see you to thank you, madame, please. Your flowers are lovely, Rajni Singh. So fragrant. It is your room that is fragrant, madame. <laughs> With memories of my native land. It is all so real, so nostalgic. Mother India. Mother of mysteries. Uh, may I? Oh, by all means. They're just some photographs my uncle picked up years ago. I have them out to keep my memories of India fresh. These mountain peaks, I do not seem to place them. The Karakorums in the northeast. The pillars of Parvati, the natives call them. Oh, yes. I recognize them now. This low, rambling structure. Oh, what is it? The shrine of the sacred cow. Oh, yes, a place of holy meditation. Do you take milk and sugar? Uh, neither, thank you. Tea should be taken pure, I think, so as not to disguise its flavor. I quite agree with you. I do not like disguises. Biscuit? Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. It's so tiresome only to have one hand. Oh, I'm so sorry. I should have remembered. It is not my poor hand I wish you to remember, madame. It is I. Oh, but I shall. Always. Ladies have been known to forget, you know. That is why I have brought you this. Oh, you shouldn't. Why not? The man you sent me to advanced me 500 pounds on my worthless policy. And all I could think of was you, please. I really shouldn't. But I must see it. Oh, how simply breathtaking. You like it? Well, I'm mad about it. You must let me take it back to the jeweler. Have it properly marked. A, S, or just Adria? Just Adria. But do let me wipe it. My finger marks are all over it. No, no. They are precious to me. Your tea must be cold. Do let me... Thank you. Oh. 
How horrible of me. It is nothing, I assure you, madame. But your poor hand. I shall never forgive myself. It is I who am clumsy, madame. Hello, you nice people. My half-brother, Norman Locke. Rajni Singh. I'm delighted. How do you do? I'm so sorry we have nothing in the house for Burns. I so seldom get burned. Please, I shall go to the chemist. Au revoir, madame. Till we meet again. Soon, I hope. Don't bother to see me out. Thank you. I say, I never burn anyone unintentionally. Neither do I. I wanted to see him use that left arm. And he did. He's no more a cripple than you are. He's on to us, Norman. Does he know that you're on to him? He does, if he's the man I think he is. Don't be cryptic, darling. Look at that. What of it? It's Rajni Singh. Now look at this. It can't be Sherlock Holmes. He's dead. Is he, Norman? I doubt it. But if you were to say to me tomorrow, Sherlock Holmes is dead... There we are. All right and tight. Nothing can get through that. I don't understand. If you want to keep them out, how do you expect them to get in? My dear Lestrade, my purpose is fairly simple. I merely wish to duplicate the conditions under which these so-called pajama murders occurred. Locked doors, sealed windows, and no opening to which any human agency could possibly enter this room. I don't hold with that. Where there's a murder, there's got to be a murderer. That's the way I look at it. Precisely, but it's not the murder I'm after. It's the means of murder. The secret and terrible machinery of these crimes. Now, you don't expect anyone to pop out of that. I expect nothing and everything. Keep your eye on that alley. I may be coming down sudden like, see? Right. Now, if you'll be so good as to wait outside, I'll put Sherlock Holmes to bed. I'd feel a lot easier in my mind. Good night, Lestrade. Just stay within call. It happens awful quick when it happens. Good night.
Mr. Holmes. It's all right, old boy. Here I am. That's just a mask I had made. Oh. There's your killer. Quick, down the back stairs to the alleyway. Stop anyone who tries to leave or cover the roof. Send me around! Mark of identification on him. Too bad. I wish we had him alive. Mm. What do you make of these? Air holes, eh? Looks like he must have carried something, but what? The instrument of death was a spider. There's no doubt about it, Lestrade. And the bite of the creature drove these pajama suicides to kill themselves. How did he get into your room? Through this ventilator. Now, don't tell me that their spider had your name and address in his pocket. Hardly. This screen was removed from the mouth of the ventilator, obviously to admit something much larger than a spider. We know only half of the machinery of these crimes. Out of the light. Wait, Scott. Little and ain't it? The footprint of a child. It's a good job. I heard me mother wave me. Oh, Peter, sir, yes. We know all about it. Sherlock Holmes, he ain't dead now, not before. Dr. Watson would neither confirm nor deny the report that he had seen his friend since his startling disappearance. The good doctor maintains a profound silence. Come in. Good morning. Good morning, sir. <laughs> Mr. Holmes, I presume? <laughs> Dr. Livingston's the name. How are you, Mr. Stanley? Oh, I'm very happy to meet you, Dr. Livingston. My name is Adam Gilflower from the Bureau of Entomology. Oh, a bug hunter. Let me take those. <laughs> Won't you sit down, Mr. Mr. Gilfillet? Gilflower is the name, sir. Oh, flower, yes, yes. Goes with insects, flora and fauna. I, uh, I see you. You don't like to, to face the light, Mister Phil Gillett. My eyes give me a great deal of trouble, sir. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. That's too bad. That's too bad. They're useful things, eyes. They rest the glasses. I have an appointment with Mister Holmes. Will he be here soon? <laughs> will he? He certainly will, Mister Wallflower. As a matter of fact, he's here now. You're sitting on him. No, don't bother to get up. You tell Docky Wocky all about it. I don't understand. Not half you don't, you old herring gut. I beg your pardon. Of all the transparent old fakers I ever saw. Gilfla, what a name to pick. Gilfla, Bilfla, Moolfrog, Giggle Woggle, Wiggle Woggle. Why, you can do better than that. A child can see through you. Those dark glasses, that preposterous wig. Come out from behind those silly whiskers. I know you. Watson. Holmes. My dear fellow, you've surpassed yourself. I think you owe Mr. Gilflower an apology. They have stark mad. But not dangerous, I assure you. My name is Holmes. I know your time is precious, but my business is urgent. Thank you for coming so promptly. I believe you know more about spiders than any man in London. Oh, I shouldn't say quite that, Mr. I Holmes. I wonder if you could identify this specimen and tell me something of its manners and its morals. Mm. This poor fellow has been very roughly handled. Uh, have you a magnifying glass? Yes, sir. Oh. Here it is, Holmes. Oh, sorry. Oh, come, come, old fellow. Don't look so down in the mouth. The game's afoot, I shall need you. Will you really, Holmes? Naturally. Here you are, sir. Mm, extraordinary. Mr. Holmes, where did you find this creature? You recognize it? The deadliest insect known to science. It is the Lycosa carnivora. Habitat the upper reaches of the Obongo River. 
Its bite is fatal. Hideously. Human beings are its chosen prey. And its venom, once injected into the bloodstream, causes such excruciating agony that the victim is driven to self-destruction. Does the bite of this creature leave any trace? Only if you know what to look for. Two small punctures hardly visible to the naked eye. And its virus disappears in the bloodstream. Completely. The only thing. Now tell me, sir, could one get hold of a live specimen of the Lycosa carnivora in London? Oh, I doubt it. Now, oh, hold on. Have, um, Ordway might help. Uh, Matthew Ordway at a Burnham Villa. Write it down, Watson. Uh, Matthew Ordway at a Burnham Villa, New Road, uh, Chipping Walton. Uh, Mr. Ordway is um, uh, slightly eccentric. But that shouldn't trouble you. Huh? He has a remarkable collection of spiders. You might tell him that I sent you. Thank you, Mr. Giltlar. That's very kind of you and very helpful. Oh, don't mention it, sir. I'm a law-abiding citizen, always willing to help at any hazard. Good day, Mr. Uh, Potson. <laughs> Potson? Oh, not very funny. I think it's understandable, Watson. Not a word. With my breath off. Here it is. Look up the train to Tipping Walton, will you, Mr. Fellow? A visitor Matthew Ordway and his spiders is indicated. If Ordway is disposed of any like Cosa Carnivora in the last few months, and he can tell us who took them. Found that train for Chipping Walton yet, Watson? It's a wretched train start. They go, but they never seem to arrive. My case precisely. I know the means of these murders. I know the motive. I know the woman who directs the murder ring. And it is a woman. A fiend, Watson. She selects her victims from those desperately in need of money, persuades them to pawn their insurance policies with her various accomplices, and then kills them by means of Lycosa Carnivora. Incredible. No more incredible than nature herself. Here, let me have that. After all, nature provides the means. Our spider woman merely uses it. You amaze me, Holmes. Hasn't she some difficulty in realizing these policies later on? Not she. In due time, two years under English law, her victim's beneficiaries come forward and cash in. Never the same man twice, mind you. Well, you know it's for a fact. As well as I know my own name. And yet I haven't one shred of evidence to connect this woman with her crimes. You're in my light, old boy. Oh, Here we are, Chipping Walton. Arrive. Come in. There's a lady outside to see you, Mr. Holmes, a Miss Spedding. Oh. Ask her to come in. All right, sir. Mr. Holmes? Oh, yes, I recognize you now from your picture in the papers. I was so relieved to hear you were alive. How very kind of you. My name is Adria Spedding. Won't you come in? Thank you. My little nephew, Mr. Holmes. How are you, my lad? I'm playing nurse today. I'm sure you'll give an exceptional performance, Miss Bedding. Poor You're... child, he's a mute. Vocal cords paralyzed from birth. Oh, how unfortunate. Say, he's scratched his hand, hasn't he? <laughs> yes, he's always climbing into the most unlikely places. Run along, dear, and sit in that chair. There's a good boy. Right over there. What are you doing, my boy? That's me. Sit down. What's all? Jump in the blue. Oh, I beg your pardon. My colleague, Dr. Watson, Miss Adria Spedding. Oh, how do you do? It's a great pleasure. Oh, Mr. Holmes, my business is of utmost privacy. I assure you, Dr. Watson is the very soul of discretion. Won't you sit down? Thank you. And now, Miss Benning, how can I be of service to you? Well, I hardly know where to begin. Perhaps I'm unduly alarmed, but you see, a friend of mine has disappeared. Indeed. I've tried to get in touch with him in his rooms, but he's not there. And he seems to have left no word. His name? Rajni Singh. He was from India. Rajni Singh. I seem to have heard of him. Oh, Mr. Holmes. I'm terribly afraid I shall never see him again. Oh, come now, Miss Benning. I'm sure you won't have to look far. Look at all the pretty butterflies. 
Perhaps you're right. Larry, stop that. Oh, you naughty boy. Put on your shoes and socks. No letting go barefoot. Boys like to. Didn't you, Watson? You know what? Like to go barefoot. <laughs> I always ran through the dewy grass in the early morning. They used to call me Twinkle Toes. <laughs> I'm sure you were a beautiful baby, Watson. Now tell me, Miss Bedding, just why are you so concerned about this Rajni Singh? Well, you see, he pawned his insurance policy to get a loan. The minute I found he was missing, I went to the loan shark and redeemed the policy. Why? I didn't want to put temptation in the way of people who might profit by his death. A very thoughtful of you. If you could find Rajni Singh, you might return this policy to him with the compliments of a friend. Of course, you're going to be paid for your trouble. I have every confidence, Miss Bedding, that you're not one to leave a score unsettled. Larry, let it go. Come here. He seems possessed to catch flies. Now, if you put on your shoes and socks, Auntie will give you a nice sweet. We have quite a way with children. Oh, I bribe him shamefully. This will be the third today, would you believe it? American candy, hard to get. There. Now, mind you, don't get your fingers sticky. Cunning little beggar. One could almost tuck him into a suitcase. He must be a great comfort to you. Oh, he is. Cigarette? Thank you. Oh, what a lovely case. Yes, isn't it? I picked it up quite by accident. There wasn't a mark on it, except some uh, negligible fingerprints that the police couldn't identify. You may have it, Miss Fering. Why give it to me? Should we call it... A trophy of the chase? Oh, I really shouldn't. Breathtaking, isn't it? I owe you a great deal for this, Mr. Holmes. Larry! Don't drop the paper on the floor, dear. Put it in the fire. There's a good boy. <laughs> Come along, dear. We must be going now. Goodbye, Dr. Watson. Goodbye. So pleased to have met you. I do hope he hasn't been a nuisance. Not at all. He's a dear little fellow. Mr. Holmes, till we meet again. Soon, I hope. Goodbye. Goodbye. Fine figure of a woman, eh, hey, Holmes? I think so. Yes. <laughs> She reminds me of a little nurse I used to know in Wigmore Street. <laughs> the attractive girl. <coughs> what would you say if I told you she was the spider woman? I wouldn't believe you. If she was, she'd have at least eight legs, wouldn't she? <coughs> a bit of a cop. Blast impertinence. What, home? Bringing that policy here, bearding me in my own den. Uh, what, a, what about that train, Watson? I don't know. Uh, to the place where we're going. Uh, <coughs> I just see a man on Broadway about something. Come on. <coughs> oh.
Please, Watson. Please, deeply. What? What was it, Holmes? Yes, my dear fellow. We've been entertaining this atheist spreading. The most diabolically clever way of administering a lethal dose I've ever encountered. I still don't understand. Look here, Watson. This little confection has two wrappers. The inner one made of wax paper, the outer of silver paper. It was between these two wrappers that Miss Betty concealed the powder that nearly cost us our lives. I can taste those beastly fumes still. What powder? Radix pedis diabore. In other words, devil's foot. A very rare vegetable poison from Central Africa. Devil? I remember that. The Cornish horror. That's right, Watson. I feel like a cup of tea. Thank <clears throat> Jonas. Lucky we're still alive, eh? For how long, I wonder? Here we are, Watson. What do you mean, here we are, Watson? Here we are where? Miles away from anywhere. Well, I fancy a collector of spiders might not be too welcome in a crowded neighborhood. I think you're right, Holmes. Well, the old way can identify the persons to whom he sold these spiders. Who's there? What do you want? You Matthew Wardway? Never you mind who I am. Who are you? My name is Sherlock Holmes. This is my friend, Dr. Watson. How do you do, sir? How do I know you're what you say you are? Who sent you here? Adam Gilflower. Why didn't you say so? I'll be right down. He seems a bit frightened, Holmes. Yes, I don't like the look of it, Watson. Come in, Mr. Holmes. You're right in the line of fire. Hurry. Line of fire? Was Providence sent you, Mr. Holmes. They're after me. Who are after you? The men to whom you sold the Lycosa carnivora, of course. How do you know? Well, I mention, my dear sir, who else would threaten a man of your property and standing? Mr. Holmes, I'll swear to you, when I first sold them those spiders, I had no idea they used to put them to. And you read about the pajama suicides? That's it. And putting two and two together, refused to sell them anymore. That's right, but only today they were here. I was afraid for my life. The truth now, Walgrave. Did you or did you not sell them any more of these creatures? I swear I didn't, Mr. Holmes. I've got all this left for the shipment downstairs now. I'll show them to you. I hope you don't mind. The heat, I mean. Have to keep it this way. Tropical creatures, you know. Must be kept comfortable. Same temperature as uh, where they come from. Humid. Very humid. Come along, gentlemen. Don't be afraid. Everything's perfectly safe. Now, uh... Here's where we keep the... Lie... The big fellas, you know. Quite so. These glass cages get all steamy. There they are. Ugly-looking brutes, aren't they? Positively obscene. But their poison is very valuable to uh, to doctors and the like. So I hear. Now, over here, we have uh, some fine, healthy specimens of the black widow. You've heard of them? Frequently. Dapper little devils, aren't they? Female of the species, eh? They eat their mates, I'm told. Well, what an unpleasant habit. Oh, dear. Tell me, Audrey, have you many specimens of the Mendex flagranti? The what? The Mendex flagranti. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I sold the last one we had yesterday, but I can get you one. Wait a minute, Audrey. I think I see one on your shoulder. Take it off! Take it off! Oh, man, steady. Yes, a perfect specimen. What is this? I'll tell you. Mendex flagranti is Latin for flagrant liar. When you told me you could get me one, I knew you for what you were. A flagrant liar. Here, Watson, take care of this. You call these glass cases cages. Any scientist would call them terrariums. You said the poison of the Lycosa carnivora was valuable to doctors. Any scientist would say the virus was valuable to toxicologists. You said you were told the black widows eat their mates. Any scientist would know it. Obviously, you're not Matthew Ordway. Who are you? Wouldn't you like to know? Look out, Watson! Those insects are deadly. Gone. 
on. Blast his eyes. Come on. Here we go, Watson. Our job now is to find the real Matthew Audrey, if he's still alive. It's Audrey beyond a doubt. Well, the chap's been dead for some time. Clever devils. They knew he was the one link between them and the spiders. Now that link is broken. What have you found, Holmes? Some sort of record already kept. Looks like a journal of his travels. Dates, places, all in Central Africa. Look here. Obongo, like coke, on if poison, immune, little, doggle, faithful to. Obongo, like coke, immune, little dog, faithful. Huh. Sounds like a crossword puzzle. Little dog, faithful to. <laughs> Who's little dog, I wonder? The word isn't dog, Watson. It's dog with an L after it. Now, what word begins with D-O-G and has an L after it? Uh, dog rope. Oh, it's not a G and then an E. No, um, dog-like. Uh, That's uh, it, dog-like. Now, what is it that Audrey could have had with him in the jungles of Central Africa, immune to the virus of the Lycosa carnivora, that was both dog-like and faithful? Well, why not a little dog? No, 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 no. A dog wouldn't be immune. Never mind, we'll go into that later. Ring up the local police, have them take charge here. Right, sure. Don't see a phone anywhere. Try that door. No, no sign of one in there. Looks as if old Audrey must have gone in for anatomy on the side. That's curious. His main interest was invertebrates, not vertebrates. And why the chart of the skeleton of a child? Because it isn't. What's that? It isn't a child. Are you sure? <laughs> Look at all these teeth. No, no, no. The skull of a normal child of this size, five or six year old, would be much larger in proportion to the circumference of the chest. Watson, I've got it. Got what? That devil of a woman. Bringing that chart at Baker Street to throw me off the track. What track? She knew I'd found that tiny footprint. She wanted me to think it was the footprint of a child. I don't follow you, Holmes. Watson, I've been blind. Mole and owl of bat. Look here. A vango. Like a carnivora. Poison, immune, little, dog-like, faithful to their masters. What on earth are you talking Able about? Able to creep through the smallest openings. The perfect instrument for the spider murders. Watson, if you ever see me getting too cock short again, fancying myself more clever than Adria Spedding, just whisper one word to me. What word, Holmes? Pygmy. <laughs> It's like looking for a pygmy in a haystack. Patience, Watson. Of all places in which we may find a pygmy, a sideshow is most likely. Hello, I found it. Found what? Very place crows. That's the most significant thing about it. In an arcade where space is so valuable. Moves like that will remain empty a single day. Therefore, I'd say the place had been closed within the last 12 hours. And for good reason. Our friends have got the window. They're trying to get away. Oh, well, perhaps, perhaps they've gone already. I don't think so. Over here, quick. Don't look back. Oh, what's the matter, Holmes? What's up? Don't ask questions. Don't ring up the strike. Tell him to come for double. They're waiting here in front of the shooting gallery. Where are you going? I don't quite know. Oh, Watson, while you're waiting, don't attract attention. Try to be as inconspicuous as possible. Right, Holmes. Hurry. Hey, you sir. Try your luck on Mussolini, Iroita, or Hitler. Hit him where their hearts ought to be and listen to the olive sound. <laughs> Oh, 
just coming to be a boss. Come on. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, step up here and see the great wonder, the gypsy fortune teller. She'll tell you not how she won't. I say, Governor, come on, come on over, take a chance. How about you, lady? Come on. Your pride, I'll go on with you. Truth will hurt you, you know. Come on, see the great wonder, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, little girl, see? Yes, sir. Very cute, ain't they? Oh, very. Thank you, sir. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, the Steve Wonder, the great gypsy fortune teller. Come on, she won't ask you something. Come on. 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 Come on, Governor, bring the missus in. Afraid of a troll? That won't hurt you. Come on. How about you, lady? Come on. Come on. Get sick of a ten. A ten of your own fortune teller. Come on, she'll give you a get out into the future, not all. Your future is in your own hands, sir. How fortunate. This way, sir. Down that passage to the door at the far end. Thank you. He's on his way. Come in, Mr. Holmes. Don't stand in the drafty corridor. I should hate to have you take cold and die of natural causes. That would defeat the ends of injustice, wouldn't it? You see, we've been expecting you. Obviously. But what made you think I'd come here alone? Your somewhat overdeveloped sense of drama, Mr. Holmes. Oh? Yes. If we'd permitted you to trail us here, there was always a chance you might bring along reinforcement. So I took steps to make things a little more dramatic. Melodramatic is the word. The business of the dolls was a little overdone. Yet it intrigued your interest and brought you here alone. An exceedingly clever woman, Miss Pedding. Elementary, my dear Mr. Holmes. On the other hand, if I hadn't come here alone, I should never have got in, and you would have been on your way. A sensible idea under any circumstances. On the contrary. It'd be such a bore living the rest of my life, looking back over my shoulder. So you decided to let me catch up with you. Precisely. One of us had to be eliminated. The choice was not too difficult. You know, Miss Fetting, I find it hard to believe that anyone clever enough to use the Lycosa Carnivora and that creature in the suitcase for the purpose of murder should be reduced to anything as conventional as a bullet, even though the use of the back room of a shooting gallery shows a certain amount of imagination. Thank you. However, it will be nothing so trite, I assure you. The difficulty, of course, was to liquidate you without seeming to have a hand in the business. An interesting problem. You have, of course, arrived at a solution. Naturally. A past of inspiration, Mr. Holmes. We shall allow the British public to be your executioner. Ingenious, isn't it? Ingenious, but uninspired, if you don't mind my saying so. It lacks the personal touch. Taylor? Jiminy's meet me here and meet me there. Where the... Where is he, anyhow? I'm blessed if I know. He said, wait here by the shooting gallery. You look inconspicuous. Inconspicuous? Oh. He said, inconspicuous, Lestrade. Not half-witted. Watch out there. Dr. Watson and Lestrade are out in front. What luck. The perfect irony. The personal touch you said the whole thing lacked. Perhaps Dr. Watson will be your executioner. Turn it off, Taylor. Get him where the rocks ought to be, and here the other side. Well, what do you say, Doctor? Just while we're waiting. My dear fellow, you're playing in the hands of one of the best rifle shots in England. I say the valley target stopped. All right, Grandpa, I'll keep your air on. Just a minute, mechanical problem. My dear fellow, one can't shoot at a 
But a sitting bird can run. No, Doctor. Remove that gun. You see, when this steel plate is removed, there's nothing to prevent the bullets from going straight into your heart. Do you mind, Mr. Holmes? You'll stop out front long enough to see the job is done. Radlick, don't forget the suitcase. All right, Taylor, start the machinery. He's been a long time. Well, if he said he'd be here, he'll be here. It's no good saying he won't. Oh. Well, so I'll get Hitler the next time. I'm even better with an elephant gun. Oh, he's gone again. I'll get him this time. My dear Miss Fenning, I replaced the gong. Don't move anyone. You may get a start. All right, lad. Sergeant, take care of that suitcase. There's valuable evidence inside it, and it's alive. I'll take care of it, sir. We can put those things on the start. You go quietly. Thank you, Mr. Holland. I say, Holmes, where have you been all this time? I've been going round and round in a circle. Circle? Yes, but my heart wasn't in it. Remarkable woman. Audacious and deadly as one of her own spiders. Audacious? Stupid, I call it. Fancy trying to commit a murder in a place like this. With all these people about. That's where you're on, old boy. In an isolated place, a cry for help or a single shot might very well arouse the curiosity of at least one casual witness. But in an arcade like this, people are bent only on pleasure and will instinctively disregard any deviation from the normal that doesn't immediately concern them. Yes, Watson? Miss Spelling deserves credit for picking the most logical spot in the world to commit my murder. Oh? Where is that? In the middle of a crowd. Mm -hmm. 